What is going on, everybody? It's your friend, Will. We're back. We're in open beta. And we're in embarrassment of riches mode. Check out all these gems we got refund. Don't do the math on how much that adds up to. We just played our first game uh, to complete our first quest with the Black Precon. We played against a opponent named Jaw, J-A-W, who the second they realized they were going to lose, just started roping to the max every turn. So pretty classic return to the game after a little more than a month off. But what are we going to do with these gems? Uh, I think we're going to go buy some packs. I figured as a glorious return to the game to possibly producing content, at least for the next couple of weeks while Ravnica is out and interesting, we should just go buck wild and get... What should we get? Let's get... Well, we definitely need to get these, right? We want to get these Nexus of Fate. They might actually be really good. I feel like there's a ton of good stuff in Ravnica. A ton of good stuff in Dominaria. Let's start with these 90 Ravnicas and see what the fuck we get. Wild cards galore. We definitely need a lot of Ravnica. We need to get all the dual lands. Um, I haven't really looked at to see which are the ones that rotated. Will we get anything good here? Oh, this card for sure is right up my alley as someone who got their start in competitive magic playing Snow White with uh, the card that makes unicorns. <laughs> that was dope. The time shifted card. Beast Whisper, eh. Thief of Sanity. Kind of interesting. Narcomoeba could be a sleeper rare. Um, but nothing really stands out here as being awesome. These split cards are probably, most of them I imagine will find a home. The rare ones. Alright, Assassin's Trophy number one. There's the money card, Chromatic Lantern. For sure, we're going to be able to make cool cards. Zoni, I'm really looking forward to making some black-based, either black-green-based or black-blue-based uh, graveyard decks. And Zoni is definitely going to be a part of those. Steam Vents, awesome. Swift Blade Vindicator, for sure, is going to be a good one. What's this? Oh yeah, this is like the Goblin that seems good but might not be that good. Let's keep going. Double uh, Mythic Wild Cards. Doom Whisper. This card seems absolutely insane. I don't trust anyone who says they built decks with it and it's not good. At least not until I try it. Raul. Not as good as the other one. Um, the Nebraska. I'm really excited to play with the Nebraska. Let's see. This card had so much potential until you just look at how much it costs and how little it does. Another Mythic Wild card, though. We'll make good use of those. This card, if you listen to the game podcast, this definitely seems like it's either going to be awful or it's going to be broken beyond all belief. And we got two of them here. Shout out to the game podcast. This card's nuts. Yeah, I've heard some people talking about this. Anything recursive just seems insane. With uh, the number of graveyard mechanics that are in this set. Alright, another Vindicator. This is one of those cards that you're probably going to want four of, but it's going to feel really bad to craft them. And honestly, at the beginning of a... After a wipe, we haven't played much of it on this channel... Uh, and if you're new to the channel, you can go through and see the old videos. But I'm not really an aggro player, but I'm certainly not above it. Um, I and I is definitely a card that I think is cool. I hope it is viable. Definitely Clarion, MVP for worst design card in the set, if you ask anyone who pays attention to Magic. Connive. Wow, that's overcosted. Concoct is really cool, though. Yeah, this card is kind of cool. I this seems like an awesome limited card. I've only like browsed the spoiler, so I have I'm not really familiar with everything. Watery Grave, Sacred Foundry, very nice. Another wild card. Pelt Collector, one of Jerry T's top cards for the set. So, who knows. We never played any green aggro cuz I didn't want to craft all the random rares uh prior to the wipe. But I might be up for playing green aggro now. 
There's another one. Another bad card. Another lantern. Very good. Thousand Year Storm. I know BDM has been tweeting about this card and some of the weird things it can do. Fireminds Research. Looks like a strictly fun card, but who knows? It might surprise us. Temple Garden. Nice. Here's our Vraska. Trophy. Another Rizzoni. This card, if only it was Sphinx Revelation, if only it was an X <laughs> uh, blue-white card in an instant. Amara kind of interesting. I don't know how abusive it is, but think of the um, Dominaria, uh, what do they call those, chapter, chapter card that lets you tap creatures from mana temporarily. Like, this is kind of an interesting card to go on a green-white deck like that. And it also plays with the Convoke, obviously, in Celestia. Alright, uh, Drown Secrets, this is the reason to maybe go and pick up some M19 bundles to get those Nexus of Fate, because this could be the easy, easy win condition in a Turbo Fog type deck that rewards you for looping your time walks. I don't understand this card. Oh, another cranial extraction. This card seems just like a nice role player. In this is an interesting one that they stapled on the at the uh, beginning of your end step gain control of all creatures you own. This is not an effect that they do very often. I'm trying to think of the last time they did it. Uh, and also, like, why <laughs> they did it. Like, what were they thinking about when they made this? So that's 90 packs. Where does that put us? We have uh, 18 rares, 10 mythic wild cards. I think we also have, like, a code that we can redeem. Um, I think it's, like, play. They tweeted this from... Yeah, look at that. That's that. You know what that's called? Photographic memory. They tweeted that from their account that you can open that code in packs. So this is just a little, a little three-pack bonus ball here. Secret Foundry. Another Narc Amoeba. Doesn't show you your vault progress anymore, or yet. Um, really weird that they... Let's go back to the store. Really weird that they decided... Or I, think we're in, or I think we're in for at least one more of these Ravnica bundles, because we want to get dual lands. Oh, did I fuck up? I did. Okay, so we're going to have to go through ten of these, so I can open ten again. Oh, Lazav. This card just seems so good on rate. And the uh, activated ability just seems like it has a lot of cool implications, and it also, since it's like not a tap effect, makes it kind of have interesting implications for late game. Like, this is a two-drop that's not a bad late game top deck, assuming you build around it accordingly. All right, so we have to open down to 80 packs here. Yeah, super, super weird that they decided just to go into open beta and do the wipe without figuring out what they're going to do with the fifth card problem and how they're going to handle wild cards, duplicates, and all this. Like, Honestly, it's not best practices for a free-to-play game like this, right? Like The way that free-to-play games work, you want to kind of work the math out ahead of time. Another Watery Grave, nice. Uh, and the way you do that is more or less in long-term betas. and In the industry, they call them soft launches. And I kind of imagine that you know you would never tell people in your closed beta that they were in the soft launch, but that's more or less what it was, right? And uh, you have a limited cohort of players. Every time you make a change, you introduce more, a new cohort, so you can track how that cohort behaves with your change. So essentially, they're going live with a product that's taking money here without a solution to this fifth card problem. And they're never going to be able to establish a clean cohort of players now to know truly like what the effectiveness <laughs> of their uh, their solution to this is. So I, I, I know that they posted that 
the packs now are going to bias against cards you already have four of. So I think I'm at four in Archimedes, so if we open another one, that would be kind of weird. Mnemonic Betrayal, interesting. But yeah, really bizarre. Really bizarre that they seem to be, on the one hand, taking this seriously, and on the other hand, not at all following best practices for launching a free-to-play game. Div Mizzet, love this card. Just think it's really cool, but I just don't think it's going to be playable. This card is super flavorful, and I hate that it is, because I don't care about that stuff. Uh, so if this is true, if it's going to bias us against things we already have playsets of, there's a few of these rares that we should not be seeing soon. Oh, so this is supposed to be one of those best cards, right? Tajik. Just an insane three-drop, possibly format-defining. Another Lazav. Another uh, Zoni. Let's rip it. Open 10. Let's go. Another Watery Grave. Another Lantern. Another Trophy. Another Vindicator. Foundry Tomb. Nice, another Rouseric. Aurelia, I'm a little disappointed in this card. I wish it was a little bit bigger. Although it can target itself, so it can attack as a 4-5, so it can mentor pretty well. Like, may maybe this is playable. Maybe this is the top end of a Boros mentor aggro deck. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, look, it's a 4-5 Vigilance for 4. It's not that bad. I don't know. It just seems like for a mythic and it's Aurelia, it should be a little cooler. Okay, they stapled Mentor onto it. Okay, this is our first Temple Garden, it might be. We got another Tar uh, Tajik here. Another Doom Whisperer. Our first Charnel Troll. This card is super cool, but I. This is like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I've never really seen the art for this. This is fucked up. I think Mattel should sue them for sure. But this is a super cool card. I love cards like this. I just uh, question how playable it'll be. But we'll, we'll we'll see. Maybe maybe someone will figure out a deck that makes it work, and we can try it out. But not a card that I'm gonna be blowing wild cards on. Another watery grave. I think this card is super cool. I don't know if it'll be playable, but I really like it. Just the idea of cat paying five and getting six total cost with the cards back. Maybe there'll be a cool toolbox type of uh, deck that can make use of it. Ionize. Another Lazav. Very good. So let's assess where we're at. Um, Temple Garden. I think we haven't gotten any Overgrown Tombs, which is weird, but I also... Oh, maybe this is the fifth Narc Amoeba. Maybe they did not implement this uh, that well. Let's look. If we filter for land... How do we, f how do we filter for land again? <laughs> I guess we have to type it in. So I know they said that this is on their list of... Uh, we did get one overgrown tomb. Three sacred foundries, three temple gardens, four watery grave. Only one, only the one steam vents. But thirty-three wild rare wilds, so we could more than fill out the rare lands here. Uh, let's look at the store again. What dual lands? I have to look up now. Really quick off screen here. Um, actually, I should just go to like the Ixalan spoiler. Let's see which dual lands are in here. Really quick. Ooh, Hostage Taker is still in the format. Alright, so Glacial Fortress, Rootbound Crags, Unpedal, Drowned Catacomb. Those are all in 
Ixalan, and I assume the others are in rivals of Ixalan. Is that uh, the other five? Are they in rivals, or were they in Core 2019? I should have researched this beforehand, but you know, this is just a rambly pack opening video. So in Core 2019, we have a Johnny who could emerge as being really good again. Tezzeret. Liliana, Sarkin, who could be good again. Vivian, who seems like more and more she's going to become good in sideboards. Uh, Respondent Angel, which definitely seems like it should be good based on power level. The Nexus of Fates, of course. Psy, Spitflame, Cleansing Nova, Banefire. Gigantosaur on turn three. Let's scroll down to the land section. Oh yeah, Nickel Bolas is in here. We definitely want to try to grab some of those. Crucible of Worlds, which could be a role player. Oh wait, are there no rare dual lands in M19? That can't be correct. Only Detection Tower. That feels wrong. Where'd they put them in Dominaria? This is good. This is good dead air. Oh, so Dominaria has Lyra. Um Multani, Karn Centaurus, Sundering, Young Lost File Offering. All of the storybooks. But what are the duels in Dominaria? Oh, Teferi's in there, of course. Maldrotha, our favorite. Mox Amber, Karn. So maybe we're just going to be on Dominaria. Oh, yeah, Woodland Cemetery, Cliff Top Retreat. Okay. So Dominaria seems super high EV. So let's go. Let's rip some Dominaria here. A lot of cards we need. Boom, Teferi, Many of Dominaria, we love this card. I don't think I've ever seen this one before. <laughs> what? Oh, I opened one pat by accident. God damn it. Lotus, squeeze. Putting the squeeze on me. All right, Moldrotha, Shalai, awesome, Hinterland Harbor, great. Conjecture, this is all good. Cool, cool, cool. Joira, nope. <laughs> no, thank you. The red green one might be good. That makes the mana. Cemetery, chapel, great. So did they take away vault credit for opening packs? Because I'm not seeing any vault. Alright, there's a Karn. Clift up retreat, teach gang, Varix. All potentially playable, a bunch of wild cards. I thought that they kept the vault in, that they were just gonna keep it hidden until you popped it. You know, I think we're just going to go in on Dominaria for our second set here, and we can craft what we need out of 2019. I don't think there's enough really good stuff out of 2019. There's a lot of chaff in the rares and mythics there. And if the Nexus of Fate is good, we'll just craft them. Shall I? Or did this replace the vault? No, this is just the predictor of when you're going to get your next bonus one. Maybe this did replace the vault. I forget. 
the reason I forget is because they're not really clear about what they're going to do, and they're constantly like telling you they're going to tell you what they're going to do, and then they don't. All right, Woodland Cemetery, awesome. Chain Whirler, our nemesis. All right, so let's do one more. I think there's just too much good stuff in Dominaria. It sucks that the uh, buy a box is, is miserable bad. But, you know, it is what it is. And we'll save the rest of these gems to draft or do sealed. <sighs> Sulfur Falls, Jaya. Steal the champion, obviously awesome. Probably still a good deck, too. Probably also a good week one deck, right? Shalai. So is that four Shalai's? I feel like that's like four Shalai's. Five Shalai's. I think that they lied. <laughs> I think they lied about all that stuff. I think they don't know what they're doing. I feel like we're getting a lot of dupes we're not supposed to be getting. I don't know. We can go back and watch the tape later. Oh, okay. I was right. Yeah, definitely did not do the biasing in the pack opening. Because I feel like that's like five or six Shalai's at this point. Oh, no. Okay. Mending. So the plan is we're going to open all these packs. We're going to build some decks. And we're going to cruise through all the onboarding quests that we have left to unlock ranked and unlock tournaments and then we'll figure out what we're going to do but I definitely want to build some green black base graveyard decks some blue black green graveyard decks I want to build the decks that I like to play I don't know if we have the cards maybe we'll just build a red white aggro deck and try to beat people down do some crafting see what uh, we come close to like I think we have a lot of the dual lands for red white so maybe we should just try to make a full on red white aggro deck Nice, Karn. I feel like opening these packs, we have a pretty good base now to figure out how we're going to craft. History of Vanalia just seems like it'll be good. As long as it's in standard. Menu of Dominaria, my favorite card ever printed. Did we get any of the Green White Knight out of the 180 packs we opened in Ravnica? I don't think we did. Alright, so let's open our vault. Look at that. Oh my god, the rewards. Um, and that's where we're at, so... We have to do our weekly wins. Complete your current quests. I have to cast 20 blue or red spells. Oh, it took away the quest that I had before, which was like play 20 land, which is really weird. I had a different starter quest. So, where do we end up after all that? Ugh. 32 mythics in the bank, 65 rares in the bank, which should help us fill out the land bases we need to get competitive quickly. And then a smattering of, somehow we have more uncommon than common wild cards. I guess that's because of the way the uh, little system they have up here that gives you bonus wild cards over time. Look, this is actually nice. So this that kind of shows, look, as much as they have just been fucking up left and right with this thing, it kind of shows... What is this? Is this to make a new deck? Okay. That Adding that little wheel that helps you accumulate more wild cards over time. Like, this was always the gate, right? Rare wild cards was always the gate to building competitive decks because of how demanding the, the land bases were and just, like, you'd have to craft random rares, so... I feel like this, 32, 65, 146, this is a nice distribution. I don't know if it's worth the money, necessarily. I, I don't know if it's like, oh, wow, like, I really feel like, like, I'm sure what we're going to find out is I can only build two, maybe three decks, like, good tier one decks off of this, and then the meta will shift in two weeks and we'll be fucked, but um, it does feel like, okay, this is a strong base to start from. And, of course, we have, like, a lot of the, the rare lands we just opened. We can craft them. 
So we'll we'll kind of like figure out what we're gonna build. I'm not gonna do it in this video because this is just kind of like a welcome back. Maybe the channel is gonna be reactivated a little bit. Maybe we're hyped for Ravnica type of thing. Um, I see a lot of people didn't unsubscribe, which is great. I'm still sitting at my subscriber numbers from before the hiatus, the unannounced hiatus. So yeah, we'll be back. We're gonna play some, but I have to go to the store. And I just wanted to kind of spew gems and do a cool pack opening video for everybody. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have ideas for decks, post them below. Like, any ideas, anything cool that we could do, you know, don't be afraid. Be a friend. And we'll be back soon. Later.